So I'm making flautas today. My son wanted flautas for lunch today and we had a conversation of, you know, flautas meaning flute, the shape of the taquito or the rolled taco, whatever you call it, looks like a flute. And he had this idea, he goes, mommy, can we actually make flute sized flautas? And I thought, well, I can try, surely. <laughs> So here we are. I'm going to make extra large flautas. Now, I'll forewarn you, they might not actually be the size of a flute, but they will be bigger. You can definitely make this with regular corn tortillas, whether they're store-bought or homemade, but I'm going to try to make them extra large today. So here's how I do it. So today I'm making chicken flautas. So here I have almost three pounds of bone-in chicken breast and chicken legs. I'm gonna season with season all seasoning salt, onion powder. I have some Trader Joe's chickenless chicken seasoning. I'm also using garlic powder and cracked black pepper. I really didn't measure this. You can season your chicken however you like. You can even boil it. I just prefer to bake. So on a baking sheet, my chicken goes, and I'm gonna bake this in a preheated oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 50 minutes or until it's done. Once it's done, I'm going to let it cool. And then my husband politely offered his help, so he is shredding and chopping the chicken. Here I have my cookbook and I'm taking a page right out of my book. I'm going to use my soft corn tortillas recipe. I'm going to multiply the ratios by 2.5. So here I have my instant corn flour. I've already added the cornstarch. I'm going to add the salt, give that a mix. And then I'm going to add warm water little by little until the dough comes together. Once you mix and combine it, it should feel like Play-Doh when you press it and squeeze it through your hands. So I'm just going to cover this with a damp cloth and let it set until I'm ready to use. By the way, I will link my corn tortillas recipe video in the description below. So after my dough has rested, I took a, a large palm full of it. I really didn't measure. And I don't have a giant tortilla press, so I'm just using a pan. And I'm going to press as hard as I can and I think it could be a little bit thinner and a little bit wider, so I'm just going to use my rolling pin. And you don't want this super thin, but you don't want it thick either. If it's super thin, it's hard to peel the plastic off of it. And so to carry it to my preheated comal, I'm going to use that cutting board. And now I'm going to carefully flip it. And I do have some wrinkles and broken areas, but you just press it back together and it'll work. So I cook it for about 10 to 15 seconds on the first side. You flip it. Another 10 to 15 seconds. And then typically after you flip it again, then you kind of give it a press in the center and it puffs up. But this one, I think it was a little too thick. It didn't puff up, but it cooked through and it's fine. It did come out soft and tender. So I just took a large pizza pan with a towel on it and that's what I'm using as my tortilla warmer. I'm just gonna place another towel on top. So I did have some luck getting it to puff up by the time I did the second one. So here I give it a flip Give it a little press in the center. There we go. And then after a little while, you'll start to see it puff up. Yay, super excited. So I managed to do three large ones and the rest of the dough I made regular sized ones. And those were a lot easier to make. So all of my tortillas are cooked. Here is my chopped and shredded chicken. You can shred it, you can chop it, you can put it in the food processor if you want it broken down even more, it all works. And all you're going to do, whether you're using an extra large or the regular size, is you take some of the chicken and you place it towards one end and you tightly roll. And after like that first roll, you kind of pull it back on itself and then it, it makes the roll a lot tighter when you do that. And then you just finish out the roll 
And towards the end, I like to add a cornstarch paste. It's a little more cornstarch than water ratio. I would say equal parts, but I think I added more cornstarch. You just want it to be this thick paste and you just kind of drizzle it on the end and finish out the roll. This will keep the roll together. And if anything falls out, just kind of push it right back in there. And that's that. So you give it a firm press, and when you place it on your baking sheet to rest, you'll want to place it seam side down. And as it sits there, it stays closed and it sticks together. You could also use toothpicks if you like that method. So my fry oil is up to temperature around 350 degrees Fahrenheit and seam side down, I'm going to start frying these. This is the largest pan that I own and it's a 14 inch pan. Here I'm having a little bit of trouble. <laughs> you got to be careful with that. So I'm going to just take the spoon here and try to enclose it again and I'm going to have to hold it closed until it fries in this position to stay closed. So crisis averted. And at this point, I'm just gonna fry all of my flautas until they are golden brown and crispy. My flautas are done and look at the difference. These really did come out great. My son's gonna love this. So I'm gonna make a salsa consume. It's a brothy type salsa. I have tomato, onion, garlic, tomatillo, two jalapenos. I'm gonna flavor it with some chicken bouillon powder. I'm also going to add some Mexican oregano. So I've chopped everything, added it to my blender. I start with one tablespoon of the chicken bouillon powder, but it really is to taste. I added one cup of water. So now I'm going to puree this well. Now I'm going to add it to a preheated pot over medium heat. I added a little oil and I'm going to start cooking this. So I'm going to add two to three extra cups of water. It just depends how much broth you wanna make. I ultimately, in all, including the cup of water in the blender, added around four cups. And I realized after adding the water and the sauce to the pot, I should have poured it through a fine wire mesh strainer. So you'll want to do that, but it's okay. I scooped everything out and strained it. So I added one bay leaf, I'm adding another tablespoon of the chicken bouillon powder and salt to taste, give it a mix and let it simmer with the lid on, I'm going to offset the lid for 15 minutes over a low heat and that's it, it's so flavorful and you'll want to season it to taste. So my flautas are done, you'll place a couple of flautas in a bowl and ladle in your consomme, it's so delicious. And like I said, the salt and seasoning is to your preference. Garnish how you like. I garnish with cotija cheese, fresh cherry radishes, onion, and cabbage, and dinner is served. Okay, so here's the longest flauta. I mean, looks like a, a flute, it's kind of hot still. <laughs> so I was just gonna say, okay, thank you for watching. But then I realized you guys would be mad if I didn't try this on camera. I thought my son was gonna try it, but he doesn't wanna be on camera, so here we go. It really does make a difference when you make flautas and you do homemade corn tortillas. I'll be honest, it's so easy just to go to the store and get the store-bought. I do that all the time, but when I make it from scratch, really good. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.